Well, hello again, everybody. Boyd here with you, and welcome back to TrekWorks. Well, it's been a really exciting last couple of days. I've just returned from Los Angeles, where I met up with Paul Olson. As you guys know, we were getting ready to uh, go out there and do our interview with the uh, magic men, as we call them in the business, behind the uh, uh, miniature effects production for Star Trek The Motion Picture. We had a wonderful time. We sat down and did a great interview with the uh, geniuses that worked on all the models and the miniatures used in the film. People like Paul, uh, Paul Olson, Mark Stetson, Richard Taylor, Jim Dow, who actually built the Enterprise model. And I have to say, guys, while I was there, I just absolutely had to pinch myself most of the time to believe that it was real. Uh, these guys are Academy Award-winning special effects guys, and they were so gracious. Uh, Mark Stetson and his wife Leslie allowed us to film everything at their beautiful house in L.A., uh, located in one of the most scenic areas of L.A. Uh, their backyard is absolutely beautiful, looking down onto Bel Air and some of the other really nice areas there and it was just absolutely beautiful and they just laid out the red carpet for us they were very gracious and I just want to say a big thank you and uh, uh, we're so happy that we could have put this all together now I'll be having a, a little bit of teasers and some pictures and things along the way on the channel here um, but they're putting together a DVD of this whole thing and it'll be available through Paul on his website I'll have some more information about that as it becomes available I hope you guys will check it out and support it it was so nice of these guys uh, to sit down and share their memories. As we know, Star Trek The Motion Picture is one of the least documented of all the Star Trek films. And uh, there were some wonderful things that we talked about, guys, about how the models were built, uh, facts about uh, who built them, uh, how they were assembled, how they looked. I got to see some incredible pictures uh, that have never before been seen uh, by any of the Star Trek fans of, from their own personal collections. Uh, that have been kind of in hiding for 35 years and also some of the uh, actual uh, artifacts from the movie left over that they've kept in their own personal collection that were actually parts of the models and things like that so it's incredible guys and you guys are going to love it if you're Star Trek fans so that's going to be really exciting and again I hope you'll support that and you'll see that a lot of information about that coming up here very shortly uh, so that was wonderful and I want to say a big thank you to Paul Paul was just such a gracious host. He took me all around Los Angeles the time I was there and showed me all the sights. We walked down the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame. I saw all the Star Trek uh, stars right there in front of Man's Chinese Theater, the, the big uh, Star Trek uh, setup with all the crew's uh, signatures and handprints and everything. It was just wonderful, and it, it was so surreal being there. I just really had a wonderful time. So thanks again for that, Paul. And Paul and I have uh, really built a wonderful friendship. And... Uh, it was just so cool to talk to people like Jim Dow who built the model and uh, uh, talk to him as a fellow modeler and I think he really really enjoyed that so we had a lot of fun and again big shout out to you guys for supporting the channel and everything here if it wasn't for all this and how uh, TrekWorks has grown in the last two years thanks to your support and uh, viewership that uh, this would have never uh, been able to happen so big thank you for that guys I really appreciate it and uh, we're coming up on a million views here on the channel and uh, it's all thanks to you guys. We're going to be continuing on here, like I always talk about, staying busy on the bench, uh, sharing our tips, and uh, passing along anything we can do to help you enjoy the modeling and hobby. And that's what it is. It's a hobby. It's all about having fun. So we're going to keep going with that. we got a lot of really exciting projects we're going to be working with going forward here. So uh, today I've got a couple of really nice uh, little side projects I've been working on that I want to show you guys. And then we're going to get back in the next couple of days in full swing on the Enterprise refit project uh, getting back to all the Aztecing and everything that we started on that so you can look forward to that in the next couple of days as well so thanks again everybody I hope you're enjoying uh, the channel and uh, again it was great and you'll get to see some of the uh, things from the trip out to LA here very shortly so stay tuned for that alright guys we're gonna head over to the bench now and we're gonna show you what we've been working on here and uh, we'll be right back with that everybody Okay, everybody, we're back with you again, and you can see here's what I've got on my bench. I've been working on this nice little Mobius 124 scale Lost in Space chariot kit. I did post an update on the uh, channel here uh, a couple days ago, and uh, I think I had some background music going on, and it got blocked in a couple spots. So I wanted to repost this for you guys and show you that since, I, since then I've also mounted it on this nice little base. I got this base from... Uh, uh, Cult TV Man. It's ran about $30. It's, I thought that was a pretty good bargain. I practically couldn't make one for that. And it's just a generic base that they have over there. It comes with these nice little rocks. And um, I think the chariot looks really 
at home sitting on it. So I really like how this turned out. You can see we had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, we built this up using some uh, paragraphics aftermarket parts. You can see I was able to do that nice uh, detailing on the lighting in the dash in there and uh, all around the model. It adds a lot of detail. You can see some nice mesh here at the rear on the uh, cargo rack and uh, just really brought the model to life. And there you can see we've got the little uh, 124th uh, B9 robot that comes with this kit all built up. I used some uh, fiber optics on that. You can see that up in his weather dome here and uh, we've got him all lit up and looking pretty cool. Uh, I did a little bit of weathering on the rocks and things like that to look them, make them look a little bit more alien looking and put a little bit of foliage in here and there. Now uh, the plan for this is going to be uh, you can see it sitting on this little box here. This is just a shadow box. My friend Dave over at uh, Wolf Base is going to make me a nice base that will have a nice little MP3 player here uh, in the front that will allow me to have the sounds and dialogue and music from Lost in Space. And we'll have a little power switch on there as well. And then we're going to mount an acrylic uh, lid over the top of this. It's such a delicate little model that uh, we don't want a lot of dust and everything to get piled up on it. It'd be really hard to keep it clean and stuff. So we're going to get it all nice and sealed up. So that'll be pretty cool. I'll show you a little bit more of that as we get down to that. A couple more weeks and I should be able to have all that wrapped up. But uh, I had a lot of fun working on this one. You can still find this kit. It's out of production now, but um, you can still find it on eBay for a fairly reasonable price. Now, uh, the word is, is that towards the fall, Mobius is going to release a two-pack, which will include the Chariot and the uh, Space Pod from Lost in Space in uh, 1 35th scale that will match the scale of the uh, Mobius Jupiter 2 kit, the one that I just finished building not too long ago. And so I'll be picking those up later this fall and building those, and we're going to do a nice little diorama with my Jupiter, so I'll show you a little bit of that later on. Uh, also, my friend Jerry at HDA Model Works has printed me up a nice little backdrop that'll go behind this of a nice alien planet uh, landscape, so that should be a pretty nice little display when this is all finished up. So uh, here you can see a little bit of the detail uh, in the interior and everything of the lighting that we did, and I'm really, really happy with how this turned out, guys. It was a fun kit to work on. And it took me about two and a half weeks. I worked on it off and on in between the other projects. And um, as you may or may not know, this entire upper half here is molded in clear. So what I did to achieve that is I masked off the internal uh, ribbing support uh, beams there, if you want to call them that, and did all those in orange first on the inside. And then I came back and masked everything off on the outside and painted on all these little ribs and panels in different colors of uh, kind of gunmetal gray and uh, silver. And... Uh, came out really clean. You can see our glass looks really good and everything. A um, couple places where I got a little bit of overspray on the glass, I just used a little bit of uh, uh, some fine uh, paint polish compound and just polished that right back up and you know make the glass look just like brand new. So it's nice and clear and nice and clean looking. So again, I'm really happy with this. Uh, here's a little thing that I wanted to show you guys that I've been working on also. Some of you might recognize it right away. This is the uh, flying saucer from the original television show, The Invaders. Some of you guys right, uh, my age might remember that, uh, back in the 60s, late 60s. This was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. It used to scare the heck out of me. The invaders were so creepy, you know, they were aliens, and basically when they would go down, they'd start glowing red and disappear, and uh, this flying saucer is a classic example of the uh, classic UFOs that we all grew up with, and I really love this. Again, this kit's out of production, too. It's really hard to find. I got this one off of eBay, and I paid a little bit more than I wanted to, but I wanted to have one of these, and... We're doing a nice diorama with this one, but I wanted to show you the uh, painting that I've been doing on this. And you can see I used those nice iridescent colors on this again. I wanted to make this look like a really cool alien alloy and have it super slick looking and uh, kind of, you know, alien weird and creepy. And uh, so I think it turned out pretty cool. And uh, uh, you can see we have these slots here on the top. I had to cut those open. Uh, There'll be a, a lighting effect in that, which will uh, give us a nice rotating lighting effect there. I'm um, having a board built by my friend Ralph at Tenet Controls for that. And uh, down here on the bottom, you can see that we've got uh, some lighting going on already. I've got these nice little uh, uh, green domes that are here, and that's exactly how it looked on the television show. Now, unfortunately, the kit comes with some red domes, and they're not exactly shaped right either. They're kind of flat on the edges, and then they round off. Uh, these look a lot more accurate. I was able to find these replacements through a nice little company called Kitcraft. That's www.kitcraft.com. They're a great little company that supports modelers. Uh, they sent these out to me right away. They were really fast and friendly, and I do recommend them if you're looking uh, for a little... Uh, they have all kinds of different clear uh, replacement parts and different shapes and things like that, so uh, you might want to stop by and have a look at that. 
uh, might find something interesting over there for one of your projects. Here you can see on the bottom also that uh, we're going to have uh, in the center, there's a uh, about a three inch opening there that will be uh, glowing in orange and it will be doing a slow sort of pulsing effect exactly like it did on the television show. Again, I've seen these built up where they were lit, these bulbs or these domes were lit in blue or in red and that's not correct for how the model looked on the show. It's up to you how you want to do it, but I wanted it to uh, look just like it did on the television show. So uh, I'm glad I was able to find those. And again, we're going to do a nice little diorama with that. I haven't decided quite on the theme of what that's going to be, but we'll show you that as we progress. A uh, little side project here. And again, I'm really happy with how the paint's looking. So that one's pretty cool. Okay, guys, well, that's going to be a wrap for this one. Uh, I, again, I really enjoyed the chariot kit here. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you're a Lost in Space fan, it's just beautiful. It's totally accurate to the original uh, chariot that was seen on the show. And uh, again, you know, this kit's going to disappear. I'm not sure if Mobius will reproduce it down the road or not. So get yours while you can if you want one before the prices skyrocket like they always do. But uh, I really enjoyed this. So that's going to be it, guys. We'll be back in the next couple days. We're really going to get concentrated now on the Enterprise refit project. We've got a lot of Aztec work to do, and we're going to continue on with that. And uh, we hope to have that one entirely finished in the next couple of weeks. I've got a couple of other cool projects that have come into the channel here uh, for some client work, and I've got a really unusual model. It's sci-fi related. I think you guys will find it interesting that we're going to be working on here very shortly, so I'll show you that in just a little while. So tune in to see that. Again, thanks for checking us out, everybody. I appreciate the support. Keep building those models out there. Have fun until we see you next time, everybody. Happy modeling.